going on people this is shy harris and today is another edition of interviews with the rebel and pretty much this show is all about just kind of speaking with different creators and entrepreneurs and kind of telling their journey their side of the story of what kind of led them to where they're at today and today we got the uh what should we call the uh the nightlife impresario i like i like impresario okay. we have mr uh john david gamble how are you doing today hey, sir how are you i'm doing good man how's how's life been treating you um well other than the the banter we had on the way in it's yeah, been, yeah, it's been yeah. good okay we're, we're happy to be here okay cool happy cool cool so for the people that don't know you who mm -hmm. are you and what do you do um i am a transplant from new jersey to virginia beach uh -huh who took the longest road possible to get here yeah but uh we're gonna talk about that yeah but had a, a good time doing it right and then that created a network for me that mm -hmm. i didn't even realize i was developing over years right um then i just i had an option to go home mm -hmm. i ac attempted to go home once yeah, yeah and then came right back okay va is definitely home now i've now spent more time here in my life than i have anywhere else so okay okay yeah but what do you actually do at this moment in life this so point? this moment in life i um I run a nightclub restaurant at the oceanfront, uh -huh. uh, a breakfast delivery out okay. of the oceanfront. Um, I co-run and help operate the wife and her mother with Rose's uh, Lumpia, which is also work carried in like 12 locations. Oh, I know about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I, I also write, so I'm yeah, working yeah. on a movie script right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that. So uh, that was creative writing. That was like my yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, you know, I realized sports wasn't going to do it for him, <laughs> like everybody else. Right, right, you know, right. You right. Find, oh, wow. I have to do something else. So, um, yeah. Good. Okay, okay. The nightlife, the restaurant business. I like um, entertaining people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like it's very entertaining in there. It's a lot of, it's, it's a lot going on in there. Oh, and, and chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Chemistry particular, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, I like to open this up with a uh, nice little icebreaker, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if your life was a movie... The movie's called Gamble. Mm -hmm. What would be the three to five songs that would be on your soundtrack? The, the songs that kind of mean the most to you throughout the, mm -hmm. the duration of your life. It's funny you say that. Um, so, What I Got from Sublime. Okay. Uh, what Triumph. I okay. So, um, What I Got. So, these two songs go together. Yeah, yeah. Triumph and Wu-Tang. So, uh -huh. um, early, fourth, fifth grade, okay. I moved from... Uh, New Jersey, uh -huh. uh, Vineland area, Millville, yeah. Rosenheim. We okay. bounced a lot, a lot of Section Eight when yeah, I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Until my father um, took a better job, uh -huh. and then my grandparents helped out. So we moved south to Exit Zero in New Jersey, which uh -huh. is Cape May. Yeah, which is like old Victorian. It's a resort <laughs> town. It's kind of like Virginia Beach, but much, much, much smaller, more quaint. Oh, okay. They don't let like outside um, corporate companies come in. Like the only thing on the island in, of Cape May is like a Wawa. Mm, okay. Right, like, yeah. um, but that's because Dick Woods from Pennsylvania and New Jersey and everything. So, okay. um, uh, it's very small. Yeah. And um, it's predominantly white. Yeah. And where I came from was predominantly ethnic. Right. So, right. um, when we moved there, it was a big culture change for us. Yeah. And then, in that time frame, I was kind of confused of who, who I was. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I was being like looked at differently because I'm new to the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Being the new kid in school a lot, which I, I enjoyed, mm -hmm. but um, after that, you know, being in this new neighborhood and not knowing people and deciding on who to hang out with, music really played a role in that. Mm, okay. Um, so on the bus, yeah, the yeah. bus driver would only allow two songs <laughs> because no one could agree on, you know, one right, specific right. song. So Triumph and what I got was okay miss kelly i think her name was the bus driver we had for years um but she would play that bus song. driver play music oh yeah yeah she was cool she wore like oakley sunglasses yeah. like the, the ken griffey yeah, yeah, yeah um she was awesome okay and if i if she ever sees this and i messed her name up i'm sorry but um <laughs> but bus drivers you know they're they're real superheroes yeah, you know? yeah. um but she would play jams and so we could you know that was my music oh, okay. for those two but then my third yeah, yeah. My third would just be, um, I mean, anything Sam Cooke, really, but... Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so, it was Chain that. Gang. So, when Chain Gang, uh -huh. when I first heard it was in uh, that movie with Danny DeVito, um, where he taught, like, those army misfits. Oh, okay. And I thought you were going to say twins or something like taught that. Taught them, re <laughs> you know, how to write. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. And um, I can't remember the name of the movie, but 
in that movie, they he uses that to get them together. That's mm, all. Okay. And, uh, and then I started listening to it. Then slowly started start listening, listening to the whole yeah, yeah. discography almost. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty. Um. I I enjoy music. You're right. And I caught on to it late. So like you know right around right, like fifth right. grade. So uh -huh. then I was like diving in. So Sublime led me off one way, and Wu Tang led me off in another way. <laughs> Those are two completely right. different tracks. But like then that. Sam Cooke is something that Mom would play yeah. on the record player while she was cleaning or something like that. Gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, right. okay. okay. So, That's a yeah. very diverse uh, three right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Help me. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> I see. All right. So, um, what's the what's the John Gamble origin story? Like, what what's the story that kind of led you to who what I have in front of me today? Uh, well, you got to thank, uh, first my two grandparents, mm -hmm. grandfathers that are still here. Yeah. yeah. I have all my grandparents. Mm, okay. God bless. Yeah, yeah. Um, very lucky. Not too many of us have. I wow. Know. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. and you know, my, my kids, I have four children, four boys Okay. and I'm married, uh, and they get the experience of their great grandparents. Right. So something very, yeah, yeah. not many people get. Right. Um, so, but my two grandfathers, John and Chet. Mm -hmm. um, those guys are really like cornerstones for mm -hmm. me, at least I like to think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give my dad too much credit, you know. <laughs> but uh, his father, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all. But, right, right. Um, yeah, they're guys I've always like. My one grandfather, John. Like, if I was ever lost anywhere while traveling uh -huh. in the continental U.S., I feel like I could just call him. This is like MapQuest days yeah, before yeah, MapQuest, yeah. right? We had to print out the directions, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, someone yeah. was in the Navy, so right. I'm, we're just everywhere, and, and I could always call him, and he would be like, "Turn left." Get yeah. back on this interstate. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How does he do this? You know? Yeah, yeah. He's the smartest man I've ever met in my life. Right, right. You know? And he always had an answer for something. So it's to this day. Um, and then my other grandfather, Chet Chester, um, he's just uh the ideal like country man's man, you know? Mm -hmm. My mom's father, he's just old school, he fishes, he don't take no shit off nobody. Probably fixes cars. He does it does it. Yeah. You know, he's just yeah, old yeah. school. Yeah, old school. Yeah. You know, taught me how to Fork and knife properly. Okay. Look, he had kept us around. You know, he yeah. watched us when, when my mom and dad were both working. When we were real young. My mom was got pregnant when she was sixteen. My mm -hmm. dad was seventeen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my grandparents were a huge influence. Yeah, yeah. Right, always around like most young kids with young parents. So what? Not to kind of cut you off in your story, mm -hmm. but what did you kind of pick up from each one of your your grandfathers? They're both. Um, so <laughs> it's funny. I I like to think that every the both influences are just at polar opposites and yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's why I'm like trying to right. give myself a little credit by beating them, meeting them both in the middle. But, uh, -huh. uh, in life, my grandfather, Chet, it was just like, um, it's going to be my way mm -hmm. or the highway. Mm -hmm. And it, that's fine. If I sit in this quaint little town in New Jersey. Now, right. Right. And then my other grandfather was this guy who's very, um, I can see it from every side of the story and mm -hmm. very understanding. Yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. people person. He talks and he's well-traveled and gotcha. he's seen the world. Right. Yeah, Although yeah. both of them were in the military. My grandfather Chet was in the Navy, uh -huh. which I have ended up joining. And right. then my grandfather John was in the Air Force. Mm, okay. Right. So both of them. And then my grandfather met my grandmother in England, brought her home. So my dad, like first generation American, like my uncle was born in England, my mm. uncle Tracy born in Germany, mm, you know, okay. um, things like that. Uh, and then just to have my mom's parents who just stayed in one town their yeah, whole yeah, lives, yeah. you know. Mm, so I got okay. both sides of that. Got and it. it's really cool because, you know, I got to travel to England when I was younger and yeah, see family yeah. and they come and stay with us and pen pals growing up and, you know, things yeah, like yeah. that. So um, coming from New Jersey uh -huh. and then working my way through college right, and right. failing at college and giving the old college try again. Uh, and then, Cause you uh, played basketball too, right? I played football. Oh, football. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought no, I played no, no, basketball. No. I can't, no jump shot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I All played right. basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just like. Because you had to play three sports. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, basketball was my other. Oh, okay, okay. Um, football and baseball. Oh, okay, okay. I played football in high school, mm -hmm. college. Um, and when I realized that wasn't working, you know, it was like, what do you do now? So how did you realize that wasn't working? When, I think we all... When the university said it's not working, <laughs> uh, they said... Uh, it's funny because I went in on this program where you go there early, yeah, yeah. even before football camp, your freshman year, mm -hmm. and you take these classes uh -huh. to get eligible. And I had to do that to get into school. And what school was it? Well, the first school I was at was Hofstra. Oh, okay. And then the second school was Kane University. Okay. Right. So 
um, first school we'll get accepted to, um, turns out, yeah, your grades just aren't up to par, right? Hofstra. So they're like, oh, you're not, sorry, you can't make it. Yeah. yeah. And then you go to another uh, university and you play there mm -hmm. and it's just not the same because it's not division one, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, that was Kane University, which was in Union, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So after two attempts at college and playing football at both um, and realizing now that, you know, in high school, you're the best player on the team. But when you get to college, everyone Everybody was the was best, the best player, player on the team. team. Yeah. Right. And I was very undersized. And um, What was your position? I played quarterback and wide receiver. Oh, I went okay. as an athlete. Oh, okay. I ran the scout team. That's yeah, what I yeah. did. Um, I was more, have you ever seen um, Blue Mountain State? The show? I feel like I... Yeah. So I've been referenced as the guy, like one of the people on that show. Like I was content with not being the star. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I, I'd sit in the, I'd run the scout team. I'd hang out. I'd run the practice squad. I like to party because growing up, it was so strict for me. Yeah, yeah. When I got to college, you wild told me I could do whatever. I, oh man, wild out. Yeah. I just, I was in the city every night. I just, I never went to class. Yeah, yeah. I was terrible. I was a terrible student. Terrible. Mm, okay. I just wanted to be around people all the time. Okay. Okay. And then, so, so after those attempts, um, I had some friends who joined the Navy right out of high school. Uh -huh. and my brother was even in the Navy. Right. And so they said, join the Navy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Works out. They'll pay off your debt from college, this and that. I feel like that's what they tell everybody. They did. Yeah. yeah. They did it though. They did, and I did. Mm -hmm. So I did it, and um, and I'm thankful I did. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any regrets. Right. You know, I went to college. I gave it that try. I had a blast. I met some lifelong friends. How long were you in college for? Two and a half years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not even, like, to get out now and yeah, use, like, yeah. my GI bill or something. Yeah, I'm just going to hand that down because it's, it's a waste of time <laughs> at this point. Um, you think, uh, I thought about getting, like, my helicopter's license or something. Really? <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather give it to one of the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so after college, I joined the Navy, and I was um, stationed at Damneck. Or, okay. Well, I had a school at Damneck, and then I was stationed in Norfolk. Uh -huh. So, which is far enough from home, but, but close, close enough, enough to if I want to miss some family. You could drive back right. five, six, seven hours. Right. Yeah. And I had an outstanding, um, I had a rough start, but I had an outstanding Navy career. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Outstanding. Uh, there was like some bumps. You always get the bumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, that's a story for another time. Cool. But uh, <laughs> but everything was great. I had the, okay. the best Navy career. I mean, I hit like 22 ports yeah, yeah, yeah. in less than four years. I got an early out. Right, right. Yeah, it was fantastic. How long were you in the military for? Four years. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was it. That's all I needed. So I guess once you got out of that, you said you were going to make, you know, Virginia, Virginia Beach your home? Right. So I thought about going home. Uh -huh. Um. Even when I was in the Navy, I was always working at Chicho's. Okay. Um, down at the ocean front, which my yeah, buddy yeah. Matt owns now. Actually, me and him started there. We were both in the Navy. Uh -huh. We were pizza boys. <laughs> and then um, we would make pizzas all night. Yeah. We'd be in the Navy all day. Yeah, yeah. And then we'd go straight to Chicho's and we'd work there. And then we'd pay like the high school kid 20 bucks to close. And then we'd physically sprint to the block, uh -huh. which is was crazy. Charlie's at the time, which yeah, is yeah. chemistry now. Which right, I ended right. Up buying. But like, he. We would run down there, catch last call, and then that's on 21st Street, and then he lived on 24th. So then we'd mosey on down to his house, uh -huh. and party there all night. The sun would be coming up, and everyone would just hand an electric razor around, just throwing your utilities back <laughs> on, get in the car, and we'd all just like nap, and everyone would drive to work every morning. And that was our routine, and we did that for years. How old were you when doing that, though? So when I, I was the luxury of going to college first and then going to the Navy, yeah, so yeah. by the time I hit, a fleet, I was 21 years old. Oh, okay. So I hit Virginia Beach when I was 21. Oh, okay, okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say around that time frame, probably between like 21. Like 06, 07. Yeah. Um, and even just the ages, yeah. like 21 to maybe like 24, you can actually move like that. Once you get like 25, like, man, F all that. Yo. Right. That's too much. Yeah, so I hit Virginia Beach when it was, um, I would, if the locals tell it, it was at the end of its prime. Okay. I was on the down. I came in on the down slope. Okay. So like the OGs and the legends who I think are down yeah. there. Um, I was like their bar back, their pizza boy. Gotcha. You know gotcha. what I mean? Gotcha. You said like 06. Yeah. That's, I mean, 06, 07. Uh, I mean, I didn't really come on the scene until 08. Oh, okay. Um, I was always down there. Yeah. Just yeah. in the shadows. Like just, gotcha. I was just another customer. I was the Navy kid. Right. right you know, right. getting turned down by the local <laughs> girls because I was in the Navy. <laughs> Gotcha. So when yeah. did you decide to like, you know what, I'm partying all night or every night. 
when how can I make an impact or was that even like a thought like it wasn't a thought it wasn't a thought until um until I had my twins okay in 2010 okay so um I met the mother of the twins yeah. in 09 yeah. and then we didn't have a long relationship but you know we had children yeah so um they are what buckled me down and, and i had to decide right then and there i'm guessing twins would do that for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right so it was like do you want to take the couple credits you got in college go right. back to your old high school they will always take you in right and be a gym teacher or be a cop like with your brothers in their hometown which i have the utmost respect for my two of my brothers yeah. who went home and became cops after their college and military experiences but right you know what they do i can't do yeah, yeah that's yeah. a special kind of person does that right. um um and hats off to anyone who in that line of work mm -hmm. but uh, you know, that was, just wasn't for me. So I was going to go home and do that. And we actually made an attempt. And then that summer I had to work with my father. My father owns a construction business, which is what I grew up doing on the weekends. If you don't uh, have something to occupy you. Yeah. So hoof and shingles was something I grew up doing. Um, you know, when you're that age, 22 now, uh, 23, I got twin kids. I'm going home. I was bartending in Virginia beach making $500 a night yeah. in cash. And then I'm coming home doing roofing with my dad in the hot sun, hundred degree weather for a $500 paycheck a week. I and mean, I was like, yeah, I don't know how yeah, to do this. Those numbers don't really add up. <laughs> right. And like I said, when I see, when I drive by a construction site, I mean, I appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. every sound yeah, coming yeah. off that job site. Right, right. Somebody swinging a hammer or whatever it is. And then that guy's you know the work that, Right. That I know the work that, yeah, right, yeah. what it takes. My father still does it every day. And all I got to say is know your worth if you're in that line of work. Right, you know, right, get right. your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which anybody should. And then that's like if I would do business with you or yeah, anyone yeah, else, yeah, yeah. like, and you say, how much is my time? Right. You, know, you tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect you to know what your worth is. Right. Because for the longest time, I didn't know my worth mm, okay. in this industry at all. Mm, okay. Yeah. Until someone put it in front of me, like a piece of paper in front of me. And then I was just like, oh, really? You know? And then I was like, okay. Oh, so I know it's about to, we're about to jump all around. Mm -hmm. How did you figure out your worth? when a new offer was presented to me right before pandemic really like right before pandemic oh so this is like last year yeah and everything is paused the, the entire yeah, yeah, yeah the entire project is paused because of it oh okay. right so um yeah that was the first time i was like oh a little boost of the ego yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah. um wake up call for me because i even went in and lowballed myself mm. when he asked yeah, you know? yeah, yeah and then came back with a, a counter offer that and i was just like he said, yeah, I've done my research and, you know. That's what you're. Right. And I said, okay, fantastic. And so, but then pandemic hit. And then everything. Yeah. Purple. But then you got to find a way to uh, succeed anyway. True. Come out on top. You can't just. Sit back. Right. Yeah. And I will say, though, without, um, you know, being three months shut down, without some of the government assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I might not have yeah, made it made through. It. I got to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I got you. Um, definitely not a fear. Business is not always what you see on the Instagram. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, those are just the highlights. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, most businesses are lucky. Most bar restaurants are lucky to have three busy nights. If you have three busy nights, you're you're okay. Yeah. If you're a four or five, you're boom. You're doing something yeah. out of there. That most people probably. <laughs> so, um, so, all right, so to, to go back, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just had your t uh, twins. Twins. And so, you said you still wasn't kind of, you know, it made you buckle down. So mm -hmm. when you started to have those thought processes, like, all right, I need to buckle down. What came out of that? So I started to ask the people around me here in Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. um, what could I do to help? Yeah, yeah. You know, who needs help here? Who needs help there? And in Virginia Beach, um, the places that will let you in the door with sweat equity mm -hmm. is the restaurant business. Mm, okay. If you show your worth in that business, I'm sure like many other businesses, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you show your worth in that business, a good owner will see that yeah, and yeah. appreciate that. Right. And sometimes your time is worth more than the cash you can bring to the table. Mm, so okay. my first buy-in was no cash. Ever. Really? Yeah. My first offer was no buy-in. They just said, hey, we want you. And this is what the cash, we're going to go ahead and say, this was worth this. This yeah, is yeah, what yeah. you're going to give you. And then you're going to work it off over the next couple of years. Yeah. And then you'll see a dividend check, you know, and that's how most people get their foot in the door uh, at the oceanfront. So did you know that you kind of wanted to like to own a spot or? I knew I wanted to um, not 
work for anyone else anymore. Okay. So the first thing I was had my hands on was the restaurant bar industry. Right, so right. I said, hey, I'm just going to try to become the boss here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my good friend was my manager. And I said, mm-hmm. hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and leap over you real quick. Yeah. And, you know, and then my partner didn't want partners. And I was like, well, you're either going to make me a partner or I might, you know, go venture else. Right, right. And then so I ended up going home and having some... Um, time with my family in New Jersey. And then my dad told me, you know, know your work. Yeah. So I left the company uh-huh. and then came back after two and three years of just freelance bartending, uh-huh. which was good for me um, completely because what I did was I was working five nights a week at five different locations. Mm, okay. So I would have like Eagle's Nest, Virginia beach on a Sunday, yeah. Chicho's Virginia beach on a Friday, um, Central 111 on a Monday night, um, you know, yeah. Thursday night at Crocs. Right, you know? right. So if you're making that much money consistently, you can save it. And yeah. you can, then you can realize, all right, what do I want to do with this money? I'm saving it. Right. And, and you're probably just like meeting and building with a lot of different people if you're already different. Right. That's what I was doing. Because yeah, yeah. It, it, like the, pe- the people I meet at Crocs are not the people I'm going to meet at the block. Right. Right. The people I meet at Side Street Cantina are not going to be the people that I meet at Central 111 or Central 111, correct. But I kind of was like, hey, making my personal job to bridge these. Right, right. Bring it all together. Cultures, genres, whatever to each other. And I've always enjoyed enjoyed doing that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the guy in the group that you or you and him would never hang out right, right, unless right. I'm there. Right, and then right, you guys right. always hang out because I'm here. Right. But y'all would never call each other. Yeah, yeah, But I'm that guy. I was trying to and bring And now they different... build friends. And right. They and probably then... never would have been friends ever in life. Right. Yeah, yeah. Networking is everything. That's true. It is. It's the best marketing. I mean, your, your own brand is, I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah. So if you can focus on yourself, uh-huh. um, which is hard to do sometimes, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. because when you're in business, you're constantly trying to make other people happy. Right. So you got to be careful to account for your own time and your own pleasures. Mm, okay. You know? Okay. So that's something I'm actually in the process of trying to figure out. I feel like I had a couple years in my mid 20s where I was like super networking, had all these different people. Mm-hmm. And then once I hit 30, I was like, you trim it down. Yeah, you start to trim yeah. it down. You have like your core group and maybe mm-hmm. a couple associates. And now it's like, all right, well, now I'm at a point where my business is kind of booming. But now I need to kind of branch out a little bit more. Right. So right. I, I definitely feel every word of that. So right. I, I get you on that. So when I when I ended up buckling down at Virginia Beach, I got um, involved with, I just said, all right, I'm going to work and maintain in these key places, mm-hmm. mostly for the Chan- Chicho's franchise. And yeah. Then, um, Baldwin Enterprises, which is the block. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's primarily the two people I usually ran with over the last fifteen years. I've been. Yeah. And then I just eventually just became my own brand, and I'm just at Chemistry. There's a front, and then we run Munchies out of there, which is breakfast delivery. And then I also run other people's elements. So I rent my kitchen out, sublease it to like mm. se- we feed the street seven five seven. Okay, I know uh, you did. Antoine Lambert and yeah. Quentin, those guys who are amazing. Yeah. So if you come down, they run my kitchen. They just come in, they chef everything up, and they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seafood mac and cheese. Um, they go they go really, really hard. And they're mm, very okay. good young guys, and they're passionate. So, like Noel Vang, yeah. Vang's sushi. Yeah, yeah. did the same thing with him. Let him use the kitchen uh-huh. until he got, you know, some money under his belt. Mm-hmm. And then he bought a food truck. And these guys are trying to do the same thing. So, what was the thought process behind that? Well, the thought process behind that is... Is it just something you just want to help out with or is it like... It's a little bit of both. I'd love to help other people out for sure. But um, hard work or hard, good help is Mm -hmm. hard to find. Right. And we see that right now worse now than in this pandemic with unemployment and everything. Uh Um, I'm sure you scroll down your news feed today, you're going to see someone saying, we're hiring. Yeah. Someone saying like, why should I go back to work? You know, it's an actual debate people are having right now. You know, so... um, So, I mean, I just... With Chicho's, with chemistry, and me staying strictly at the beach now and focusing on myself um, and trimming the fat, like we said. Yeah. And you just 
your sm- your circle gets smaller, mm-hmm. but you always keep your your web. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you still never have access bridges. to these people, but right. the people you that you deal bridge. with day in and day out, right. that gets a little bit more tighter. Right. Yeah. So now I try to just support whoever I'm at at the oceanfront. So like I'm on the Atlantic Ave Association. Yeah. yeah. Um, a Virginia Beach JC. Mm. Um, I'm a chairman for ECSC. Mm, okay. So I'm involved with the community, okay. so that nobody can talk about me if I'm. Not in the room, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. They still do. Yeah. So that's why you try to be in the room as often as possible. But right. um, people tend to point fingers in business, you know, in competition and things uh-huh. like that. Um, I decide, like, if you're pointing at me, let's let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Why are you pointing at me? You know, like maybe we should just, we can work this out. Right. I've right. never, ever had a situation I couldn't resolve speaking to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, in business? Never. You know, if you hear someone, uh, you know, they, they might, you, you hear rumors, people call like the health department on each other and stuff like that. Petty things. Uh-huh. But um, if you decide to do that, then, you know, you lose the trust of your comrades and arms True. in the restaurant business and you start to do that and then people look down on you. Yeah, you don't yeah. want that. Not look a little sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, all right. Okay. All right, guys, we're just taking a break from this video for one quick second just to remind you guys that if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. This channel is all about empowering different creators and entrepreneurs to really live the life that they want to live and make the money that they want to make. So if you like this video, please consider watching maybe the last two or three videos that we put out because I know you'll probably like those as well. So before we get back to the video, go ahead and just take five seconds, hit subscribe, and you're gonna love every minute of this journey that we're on. So once again, I'm Shy Harris, in case you didn't know, of the Rebel Society, and let's get back to this latest episode. So, all right, so you have Chicho and you have Chemistry, Mm -hmm. and you've been running those for a couple years. Mm -hmm. How do you start to build up a following or build your name in that space? Um, so I was and the reason I asked that is just because there's always clubs or different situations or restaurants pop up all the time. Mm-hmm. But normally, in the first year, they might be out of here. Right. So how do you kind of like start to build that following, build your name up? So um, I was very fortunate to enter the scene and had a great group of buddies around me. Uh huh. And they're all locals. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. local locals. Yeah. yeah. So. That's to, my secret weapon was uh-huh. I just buddied up with the locals. They, mm, okay. I befriended them. They befriended me. Right. They took me with open arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of handshakes, hugs over a long time. Yeah, yeah. Buying a lot of people shots and beers. Right. 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 But with the best intentions. Yeah. Um, and, you know, over time, you know, I, I ride my bike down the oceanfront every day. Yeah. You know, and sh- I live in Chatelon. Yeah, you know? yeah. I just bought a house in Ocean Lakes, but we live in Chatelon right now currently. Right. And, you know, you drive through that neighborhood. It's it's like a little, it's a beautiful neighborhood. Virginia yeah. Beach is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I ride my bike, you know, and some of the things that we're having going on in the, in the, in the neighborhood now and in Virginia Beach, mm-hmm. it's nothing new. It's just now that we're, it's starting to get attention. Mm-hmm. And that um, is why I currently moved from the oceanfront. Mm, okay. Yeah. But as far as the, the oceanfront as a, as a business, as a, as a location, as a destination, I love Virginia Beach, yeah, yeah, and I think it's great, and I think it's only going to get better. And with the help we're getting from the city, and with the wave pool and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. with something in the water, which yeah. is a blessing. That's a holiday dropped on us. Yeah, that was crazy. financially. Yeah. That is that's a stimulus check, right? There. <laughs> right, I bet. So, yeah, what Pharrell's done has been astronomical for this city. Right. right. So yeah, let's get back on track with that. Yeah, yeah. we need we need that to come back. Yeah, ASAP. Mm-hmm. But. As far as like just kind of like building a name, I know you said, you know, just kind of networking and just mm-hmm. kind of linking up with the locals. But is it almost like a stimulus check just by being on the beach? Because I know yes. some people think that just because you get all that push. Um, I, I make jokes all the time. Like um, you could open a good bartender yeah. with the right name could open a cardboard box with a beer tap. Yeah. And the locals will flock to it. Right. But then another bar. I don't want to ever say names, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But another bar can put a hundred thousand dollars into decorations, and then hire a staff from all over the country that can flare drinks and do this and that. And then if you don't have any locals running it, the locals won't even pop their head in there. Mm, okay, they're almost petty about it, you know. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. they need that attention, you know. 
Um, okay, okay. So if you you gotta you, I mean, locals rule. Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. do. They really do. Um, and that's why some locations like um, Beach House came on the scene so well. Yeah. yeah. They scooped Jordan Breeze up right. as a free agent, and right. the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that kid's the Fresh Prince of Virginia Beach. He's <laughs> he's right now. Jordan Breeze. And he yes, and he's super motivated. He's got two other business ventures. I'm about to bring him up here. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's a good kid. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's the face of Beach House right now. He's their their promoter. And, uh, okay. Um, they brought him in, and he's been just killing. Awesome. It. Yeah, it affected okay. my business. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. But because I, I would think that, like, I remember I haven't been down on the beach in a while just to kind of like hang out, like I did, like when I was in college, and you yeah, know, yeah, you're too old for that now. Yeah, you're way too old. For yeah. That. But I know back then, like, you could just walk on the beach and you like, or walk on the strip and then just like go into a spot real quick, grab a drink or mm -hmm. something like that, and kind of come mm -hmm. out. So is it like that? Probably not now because of COVID and everything, but is it where just being open on the strip is going to get you, you know, at least, you know, a couple thousand dollars a night or something like yes. that? Yes. That's just, yeah, that's just um, traffic. Flow, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. We're going to get more customers on Atlantic Ave than you are on Baltic Ave. Right, that's right, just, right, right. That's just what it that's is. real estate. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but my rent yeah. is twice as much as his, uh, okay. you know? Yeah, so, yeah. um and then you got labor yeah. that comes into effect, you know? So, uh, and taxes are yeah, yeah, yeah. taxes. Right, right, right. Um, but yes, um, did I gain a reputation at the oceanfront um, by luck? Mm. Like just locals coming or just tourists? No, I think I did it the hard way. I, I just went and I worked at the local spots. Mm. Chicho's is the local spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're at the oceanfront, Chicho's is like Cheers. And I got behind that bar for a long time. And it, it's beautiful because 10 customers, you got 10 stools. Yeah, yeah. And I can guarantee you, like 10 people that come in that night, I can slide them the beer and put their pizza, sliced pizza order in before they even have to ask. Mm, okay. They go right to the bathroom, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you already have their order out for them. It's, it's stuff like that. With stuff like that, you can't get at, Waterman's, you know, <laughs> true. Because true. then Waterman's is flooded with tourists, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that thing's a machine. Yeah, or the shack, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but exactly. even the shack and Waterman's have their locals that will still come in, sit at the end of the bar uh -huh. because that's their thing, you know? Right, right, right. Um, so how did you classify some of the like? I, I was there before COVID. Um, shout out to my man GA came in there with him, and um, it was a wild night. I think it was a Tuesday night. Yeah. So I know you're talking, you know, all this, you know, gotta have the locals part of it, but. What you do on Tuesdays or what you did on Tuesday was right. something completely different. So marketing is is obviously key. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yes, you can open a bar at the oceanfront uh -huh. and open your doors and get business. Right, right, right. But to be next level yeah. or to raise the bar, uh -huh. no pun intended, right. you have to go that's outside a, the box. That's the name of this episode, Raise the Bar, by the way. I'll put that in my notes. <laughs> um, you'd have to raise, you know, the yeah, bar. Yeah. You have to go outside the box. And so what we try to do is Thursday, Friday, Saturdays at the oceanfront, primarily in the mm. spring and summer. Got, you know, as long as the weather's nice, you're going to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So don't worry about those nights. Yeah, don't yeah. put too much thought into those nights. Right. Worry about your Sunday, Monday, and Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah. So then we start things like um, the Wet Lab Co Contest, which we started years ago. And actually, the originators were me and um, DJ Nato. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a small kiddie pool. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when that was just. The, yeah. It was a wet twerk contest, so that was just to keep the water right. in one area. Right, right, right. And then, you know, as it progressed and evolved into what it was and became, it turned into, you know, the wet lab cup contest, and it was like the 10-foot inflatable pool, and then 10 people stacked on top of each other. And um, Very COVID-friendly. It was not. So, um, <laughs> and it ruffled a lot of feathers yeah, because yeah, what yeah. we were doing was essentially what people were doing in... Um, Gentlemen's clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the girls are in just these. Now they're in the legal size attire. Uh huh. That's it. Hooters. What right, is it? Right. What is your legal limit? This yeah, many yeah. inches by this many inches. Cool. I want to order that in these colors 
and put them on these girls. Oh, I know you had to go through that. Like, oh, yeah, I had to. Yeah, that's why the ones they have chemistry on the back. and all uh, that. Yeah, okay, so okay, okay. I had to get my own shorts ordered and just to do that contest. So every girl has to come in there and we have to give them a specific outfit to do it. Uh, now, okay. what they do with that outfit is all on them. It's on them. Yeah, and if yeah. you tamper with it or take it off, you are automatically disqualified. Oh, I and, know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so sometimes you just see that winner, like yeah, the little yeah. girl in the corner who had no business being in there, yeah, but she won because right. everyone else did their own thing. Yeah, 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 did their own thing. They were worried about other things. Yeah. So um, do you feel like you had to do things like that to kind of get to raise the bar? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it really took off when um, Shy Dot got on it, DJ Shy Dot. Uh-huh. Um, Cheyenne Silva, he, when he got on it, he really embraced it. That kid is the party. Yeah, yeah, he gets in the pool with the girls. He yeah, sprays yeah. the champagne. It's like a whole, it's I, a show. As I, you I, saw. I, I, right. I it, yeah. Um, but it's, it's over now. We don't do it on Tuesdays, <laughs> obviously pandemic hit. Right. And, um, and we'll only bring it back for like special events. Mm -hmm. You know, I only get that team together, for yeah, special yeah, events. Yeah, yeah. but we're not going to do it on Tuesdays. Tuesdays is a much more chill vibe now. Chill. Yeah. You just get um, a nice cocktail or something. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Right. So let's let's talk about restaurants real quick. Mm -hmm. So I know you say you're also in that industry and I've um, kind of been doing that for a while. Um, mostly this whole uh, series is just about kind of helping people who are on the come up as far as like trying to get their name out or trying to get people with the knowledge and tips on how to actually kind of rise through the ranks. Right. So in restaurants, like how, what would you suggest somebody who's trying to start a restaurant on the things that they should do or the things that they should pay attention to, um, even as far as getting their name out there. I know you say, you know, locals is one. So if I was being 100% honest, yeah, yeah. Um, anyone who approached me and people do approach me about right. opening a restaurant or a bar or nightclub in this time frame, and I tell them, don't, don't do, do it. it. Don't Absolutely don't do it. Why do you say that? Um, unless it is your true passion yeah. and you have a niche yeah. that no one else has. Are there really any, you talking about the bar space or restaurant? Either. Okay, got If you're going to open that, where you have, if you're the service industry, yeah, yeah. and you're going to open up right now, really consider what you're doing. Really consider that money um, because uh, you'd be better off investing it in certain places because right now is just not the time. Well, maybe this time next year? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you want to talk about this time next year? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So this time next year, yeah, yeah. what I would recommend is um, location first. Mm, okay. Um, get you a good agent. Real estate agent, mm -hmm. um, maybe sublease. A lot of people are not doing great right now, so you can sublease your kitchen or some yeah, things yeah. like that. Get a contract written up, you know. Um, so if you really like food, mm -hmm. maybe find the restaurant in your neighborhood that doesn't sell food, right? And then go to that owner and be like, "Hey, I can help you if you help me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, and then they come in, they cover your food cost. Mm -hmm. You guys are a partnership now, you know work together, yeah, networking. Yeah. That's all it is. And then, then next thing you know, hey, you know what? Maybe you buy this whole kitchen from this guy. Maybe this guy goes, hey, you're doing great. I know another location over here. Maybe you can help out. Yeah, yeah. You never know. But right, if you right. don't ask, you're never going to find out. True, true. So if you really have a passion for it and you want to open a restaurant, um, have your credentials ready. Mm. Have cash ready. Of course. Um, and good luck. It's tough. It really yeah, is yeah. tough. And to tell the general people yeah. to even try to dive into that mm -hmm. would just be too much. You know, like mm -hmm. what we see in the general is we go out and we just want someone to show us a good time. Yeah. I want my food to come in a timely manner. Right, I don't want right. you to spill nothing on me. Right. And then I'm going to tip my 15 to 20% and keep it moving, True. hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um and that's all you want to see. You want to know what happens back there. I don't yeah, know what happens yeah, with that. I don't want to know what happens while you're making it. It doesn't really matter that much. Right. Yeah, yeah. As long as it comes here and there's not a bug in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool. You're right. So, and that's all you have to really worry about in the general masses. So when you actually get in the service industry, that's why they take so much pride in what they do. Mm. Because these people literally will they go from cleaning the toilets to, you know, closing your check to valeting your car to you know, every, they do everything from top to bottom. Right, in right. Um, and they've, they've earned their respect. They've earned that 20%. Tip. Yeah, they yeah. really have. Um, whether now, if they've, if they've somehow made your dining experience less pleasurable, uh -huh. I would recommend telling them that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now when I'm a, if I'm serving you all night uh -huh. and then you have an $80 tab and mm -hmm. then you don't tip, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to yell at you. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to belittle you. Right. I might grab you 
not grab you physically, but hey, sir, grab your attention. Be like, hey, what did I do? What can I do better next time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Right, right, right. Now, am I going to say I've done that in every occasion in my career as a bartender? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, we've got on the microphone in the early years and like, boo this man, you know? And just get the whole <laughs> crowd to turn on him. You right, think right, you right. weren't getting any before. Yeah, 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 Imagine the whole crowd booing you, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it's kind of wild. Right. Um, but as far as the restaurant business right now, uh -huh. if you're going to dive into this and take this adventure, ha hire the best front and back of the house managers you can mm -hmm. and make sure their credentials are right. Yeah. And that should... You should be okay. Right, right. And getting a good, um, get whoever you're getting your product from, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you're getting their best prices. And, you know, it makes your, if you want to go fresh product, you yeah, have to yeah. do it your own. Yeah, you yeah. have to find it, search it out. Um, yeah. If you're getting frozen, you know, there are major distributors. Right. Um, getting your ABC license and things like that. Hire ABC consultant. Don't ever do anything on your own is basically yeah, what I'm yeah, trying yeah. to pretty say. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Let's uh, kind of like just segue this into another conversation real mm -hmm. quick um, before we wrap this up. I just got a couple more questions for you. Um, I believe in the phrase, you got to spend money to make money. Mm. So what is something that you spent money on that has led to the, the highest return for you? Um, the highest return? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the return yet. I'm expecting the return on what I spent the money on. Put okay. It that way. Okay. I've gotten a return. Yeah, yeah. Um, myself, okay. investing in myself, and I can't even tell you how I did that, but maybe yeah, just I was gonna say, what investing in my, whatever I'm doing, my business. Um, so I guess you would have to say getting chemistry to a certain level yeah, and then having that a reflection of me. Mm, okay. And then, um, so I guess the investment of my restaurant or my bar yeah would be the biggest payout so far because it's got me in touch with so many people right, right, right. through the years networking i.e. Yeah, you yeah. several several people I, right. i'm super blessed yeah. super blessed um to be where i'm at you know mm. and i have no regrets mm, okay um yeah okay it's okay. been a fun ride yeah, yeah most definitely most right. definitely okay one last question before we wrap this up man <sighs> this is kind of deep or it could be deep mm -hmm. So over the course of your, your your years on this earth and the course of your career thus far, what have been like the 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 three or so things that has led you to be the the three or four like moments mm -hmm. that has led you to where you are today? It could be personal, it could be business, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um so I could easily say the birth of each child. Yeah. You know? And which they are. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get like when you become a parent, right. there's not much else you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, my big three, I guess you could call them like cornerstones. Or, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I said it could be moments. The person before you said like she got, she was in a contest and didn't get picked. Right. So it made her kind of go to another level. But so one would have to be me, man. I mean, they're not the best moments. Yeah. You know, sometimes they wake you yeah. up. So... I got in trouble with the law before. Uh -huh. That was a big wake-up call for me. Yeah. Um, I said I had an early rough start to the Navy. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of trouble then. Okay. That was a wake-up call for me because yeah. that set me on the path to do the best I could. Right. And then when I got in trouble with the law outside, you know, mm -hmm. that put me on okay. the best path. That. So getting a driving under the influence uh -huh. might have turned out to be. Low key. The best thing for you? Right. Really? Yeah. yeah. It like hurts to even say out loud because it's like the most dreadful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know for a while you wasn't even really driving. Right? Bro, I don't yeah. know. And, and if the oceanfront, I don't drive. Yeah, yeah. Period. There's no point. Right, right, right. You know? So an Uber, back before pandemic, you get mm -hmm. an Uber everywhere. Right. Having that happen will really wake you up. Mm -hmm. Right? And will really get you focused. Mm, no if it doesn't, then you just, you know... You might need a few more of those. True, Maybe true, what, true. Wasn't a rough enough experience. Hopefully one that. would do the job. Right. So that one um, got me in touch with mm -hmm. a certain doctor mm -hmm. who, through the courts, right? And then I met Dr. Paul Hardy through the court system mm -hmm. and end up going to his church and then becoming his friend yeah, yeah, yeah. and then speaking on his behalf 
you know, guest speaking, right. had an article published about my experience. Uh-huh. And, um, and that led into, you know, me helping in other areas. So I do like my bartender's charity office yeah, yeah, every yeah. year, right? So we build two water wells a year in foreign countries, the Philippines, oh, right. right. Yeah. And here also, and then we just, there now we're doing the, the 16th, we have the Pacific Islanders of Virginia annual golf tournament. Oh, okay. Now I'm not Pacific Islander, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my good business partner is, and then my wife is Filipino, so you know, right. get on that board and then donate, do charity work. So that's it's kind of I see it as providing good karma yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout life, and it all trickled down from you making a bad decision, right? That's the yeah. So I mean, it, everything doesn't have to be um, a big break. Yeah, 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 sometimes that break can hurt, you know. And it's just your job to capitalize off that. And, True. You know, some of us can go down the path where it's like, you know what, I'm down on myself. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to be a bad guy and I'm just going to do this. But, you know, uh, keep your chin up. Yeah. You know, like we talked about on the way in. Uh-huh. Uh, we woke up today, so. Yeah. You know. Some people did. Right. Some people did. Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, what's next for you? And where can people find you at, man? So um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm usually located at chemistry Mm -hmm. 2114 atlantic ave virginia beach please bear with us we can only legally fit 30 people in there with restrictions so um if you come out be patient um if you say you know shod we won't charge you to get in um we don't charge cover anyway it's just with the way things are if you get in you got in that's great Uh, we do ask that if you come in um get in and get out because the more, oh, okay. you know, that helps the servers, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, table times. Um, and then uh, in the mornings, on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you can call Munchies, uh, 505-6295. It's beach breakfast delivery. So you can be at a hotel or your home or drive down at 8 a.m. and have a beer mm. and get a breakfast sandwich. Mm, okay. And we also provide um, called beach bags. Yeah, it's yeah. like a biodegradable box that I ordered. Okay. And we pack it full of ice, but I have an off-premise alcohol license. Yeah. yeah. So I can serve some beers in there for you and then uh, some okay. high seas for the kids, some peanut butter jellies <laughs> and some sandwiches. Yeah. And then you can pick it up or we deliver right to you on the beach. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So we start that in uh, June, seven okay. days a week. Yep. That might be something major. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Social media wise, what can people find you? Uh, at Gamble VI, that's on Instagram. John David Gamble on Facebook. Um, that's it. Uh, VB underscore chemistry for our page. Munchies VB for our uh, in Munchies Instagram. And you can order and, and contact us in any way through both those social media platforms. All right, cool, cool, cool. Well, I definitely appreciate you stopping by, man. This was a good Thanks conversation. Thanks for having me come out. A little all over the place, but I got to the, we got to the point where I felt like we needed to get to. Right. So, well, it's your job to edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, which you're good at. But I probably won't even edit this. Uh-huh. Just let it flow. Just let it flow. <laughs> I appreciate you having me out. No really problem. Do. Thank you for coming back. Because I'm in Portsmouth. You got to tell Cameron like that. You definitely that. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely in Portsmouth. Yeah, I'm going to check in right before I leave here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you appreciate this conversation, please consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you follow Gamble. Make sure you follow me. Make sure, you, like I said, once again, subscribe to the channel. And um, that's pretty much all I got. So uh, you guys stay safe, stay running free. But keep creating, keep shooting. And you guys have a good one.